the stove. It's like mixing concrete. Oh, that's a nice way to describe dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a major fire at a subcontractor's premises destroyed three months of production of new Hansei burners, which are the burners which we need to order. I'm Aladino. I'm both Swiss and Italian and a boat builder by profession. And I'm Maya, a Canadian artist and sailor. This is our home, Magic Carpet. She's a Vinda 32, though she's only 28 feet long. And four years ago, she fell 20 feet off a crane onto concrete. Insurance wrote her off, but Aladino bought her, fixed her, and now she's our home. Our mission? To sail around the world as slowly as possible. Meet our stove, a gimbaled kerosene cooktop that behaved temperamentally last year. Before starting this season, Aladino decided to figure out what was wrong. We suspected a small leak in the burner somewhere, but we didn't know where it was. So how's it going now with the stove? Did you just drop something down there? I mean, basically I've scrubbed it all, cleaned it all. The only thing is that this burner, I guess it's corrosion. Um, yeah, there is always less material on on the, this little tube, uh -huh. and it's where the petrol comes through. Yeah. So now it's leaking, uh -huh. and whenever I put pressure on it, it would leak. Uh -huh. That's why maybe we can solder it, the whole closed, but yeah. it would be nice to order one. Yeah. Also because, yeah, whenever we put it under pressure to use this one, this side just leaks. So now that we've discovered that we need a new burner for the stove, I've been tasked with the job of finding a new burner to order online. But for some reason, every single website is sold out of the burner. You can buy other spare parts, but you can't buy the whole burner. And then I found this one website from the UK and it has a customer notice and listen to what it says. It says, in December 2018, a major fire at a subcontractor's premises destroyed three months of production of new Hansei burners, which are the burners which we need to order for our stove. It has taken a considerable effort to retool and get production running again with new contractors in Germany. At present, new burners are not available, but spares are still being delivered, though in reduced quantities. Hi, hi, hi. So then I looked into it a bit more and it looks like at best estimates they might have these new burners in production again by July. So we're going to have to come up with something else to do in the interim. We were faced with two, possibly three solutions. First, we could try to repair the existing burner. Second, we could plug the broken burner with something so at least we could use the functioning one without pressure escaping from the broken one. The third and less desirable option was to take the opportunity to buy a new stove. This wouldn't be the end of the world because kerosene vapors have dubious effects on health, plus it's getting really hard to find and it's expensive. But don't worry, we weren't about to give up so easily, especially not with this man around. You might remember Maxime from our last episode, where I called him our guardian angel. Well, that just keeps getting truer and truer. He decided to help us with repairing the stove. This was very welcome, since he knows a lot about metals and neither Aladino nor I know nearly as much. Mm -hmm. If you let it cool down slowly, mm -hmm. it become, becomes uh, soft. Okay. Like very soft. Yeah. So the, when you try to screw it on, it just Ooh. goes... Uh, yeah. I, I, I noticed that it happened a bit. That even now it's a bit soft. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a soft material mm -hmm. already yeah. at start. Uh, mm -hmm. So okay, uh, great. Oh, that sucks. Uh, and what is this for? To light the, the torch. Ah, oh, okay. Wow. One is air, one is... Uh, oxygen. Oxygen. Uh, one is oxygen and one yeah. is... Uh, now you need the blue tip, right? Yeah. There's water inside, so it's normal. Uh, yeah. So what we need to do is to warm it up, enough. Should I hold it somehow? Oh, you want to try? I mean, oh, no, 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 what? that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I watched uh, Matt, the pros first. Yeah, well, it's all done. It's not easy to work like that. Ah, uh, you cleaned the rod. 
Oh, yeah. So normally it has to melt and go all around by itself. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Wow. And okay, now it's almost like soldering. It is. It is. Yeah. It's going to be an ugly weld, but uh, it looks awesome to me. Uh, if it works, yeah. It yeah. Will. And I mean, it's not that much pressure. Uh, it says on the. You can read it on the. We have a kind of a gauge. Yeah, it's UPSI, most likely. Yeah, something like that. When we put it under a lot of pressure. Okay, can you put it on the, in the water? water? Yeah. Done. So let's brush it. Go a little bit more, but uh, it looks like there, there was a crack. In fact, okay, in it. But, uh, yeah, this also getting thin. You want? We we'll put a, a, sure. a bit here. Sure. That's gonna be easy. Yeah, I, you'll do it. I try that. Okay. Uh, fit comfortable, whichever way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is. I think this is good. If it holds. Yeah. yeah you, normally you don't don't touch it. Okay. You, you let the, the metal uh, flow yeah. just gently. So First, I heat it up. Yeah. The tip of the flame is the uh, hottest part. Yeah. Get ready with the. So, is that good if I get it there with the tip? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Then you dip it. You yeah, it just you plunge it once, and that's it. So let, let it warm up, it should run by itself. You done some yeah, around here? St st yeah, st stay closer to, to it, I mean, don't, don't move too much. Okay. You'll see, when it starts melting, it changes color. Okay, stop there. It's like red, so if you put your yeah. uh, the rod, yeah. it should melt. But you, you have to keep on, go on uh, hitting it. Okay, that's fine, it went all around. Just let it go. Should we cool it already? Easy, easy. Let it uh, cool down just a little bit. Watch out. Ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. New method of cooking pasta. Oh, you'll have to test it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Close it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just get it out. Check mm -hmm. on the uh, check on the light. If you yeah. Because you see here, mm -hmm. but I can't see very well. Yeah. Well, I couldn't tell at the beginning either where the leak was. The entire burner was so thin and corroded that it was hard to see exactly where the leaks were. Aladino and Maxime put a new layer on top of where they had noticed the leaks before, and then we tested it out on the stove. So now comes the moment of truth. Maxime gave us a new seal because our old seal was destroyed as well as the correct grease to use to apply the seal and now we are going to put the burner back on the stove and see if the leak has been fixed. Aladino pumped up the stove and our Swedish friends even came over to watch the spectacle. Our stove works by pressurizing the tank and then lighting the pressurized vapors to warm up the burner. Yeah. Now it's heating it up. After letting the burner warm up for a minute or two, then you can open the valve for the moment of truth. Yeah, but okay, that's fine. Is it? Yeah, tight it uh, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that, uh, okay. That we, we lose this, the, the stuffing box. Yeah. Just to make sure that there was no, not too much pressure. Yeah. It was still leaking, but from a different spot this time. After much fiddling and adjusting, it was time to try again. But not the one you fixed. The other one. Is it? I mean, what you fixed is, is fine, or yeah. looks? Is it? It looks fine. Yeah, so that's the other side. So it's the other side, but one is on top. So yeah. there is two leaks. One is on top, and one is somewhere here. Yeah. Uh, 
So one is here for sure, right? And one is somewhere here that I cannot detect. Oh, it's, go it's going from bottom. Ah. Check from here. Oh, here. The places where Maxime and Aladino had repaired weren't leaking anymore, but now new leaks had opened up. It was time to go back to the workshop. But after more hot metal and more testing, even more leaks opened up. We decided to try one last time before giving up, but the workshop was closed for the weekend, so we had to wait. And so will you, because as I edit this video, even I don't know the outcome yet. That will have to wait for the next episode. But in the meantime, there was still plenty to keep us occupied. I have a mission. Two missions, actually. The first thing that I'm doing right now is replacing some of our bulbs with LED bulbs, which is something that we should have done right from the beginning, but at the beginning we were very broke and LED bulbs cost a lot more, but fortunately we've managed to buy some now. And the second thing that I'm going to do is install another 12 volt plug into the boat and I'll show you the reason why. So now that making YouTube videos is a much bigger part of our day-to-day -day life on board the boat, Thankfully, we're very happy about that, but it means that we're going to make a few modifications to make it easier to produce these videos for you. And one of the most simple ones is just installing another plug so that I can plug my computer in a bit more easily. Now let me show you why it's a bit difficult at the moment. So right now we only have one plug on the boat. It's this one, and then we've got these USB plugs as well. And then we've only got one table where I can work. And right now the cable has to go across the floor. It's a tripping hazard, it's annoying. The other option is I can lift up this side of the table and sit on this bench there. But that's not really any better of a solution because it means that then when the table is full size, you can't walk through to the end of the boat. So the solution is simply to install a plug on the starboard side of the boat so that I can sit, plug my computer in, the cable's not in the way of anyone, and I can use the smaller section of the table. So these are the wires that I'm running, and I'm running brand new cables. Um, they have to go through a channel which goes underneath here, and I have to run these through this bulkhead. There's a, there's a hole up in the corner, and then kind of underneath where the kitchen is, and that's where I want to install the new plug. Um, but all along, I'm labeling the wires with the correct circuit number. Um, it's potentially overkill, but I just find it so annoying when I'm trying to troubleshoot a problem and there's all these wires and I don't know what each of them are. So if I label them kind of along the way, then it's a bit easier if there are problems in the future to, to work with it. And then of course I write down all the circuit numbers and I write down exactly where the wires run in the book where I keep all of the circuit diagrams and notes. This hole in the bulkhead is where the plug's going to be. Um, this is actually where the uh, speaker for the stereo was installed. I'm not sure if that was original from Vinda or if that was the work of the previous owner, uh, but we used different speakers and these ones were never hooked up anyway. So instead we're going to put a panel behind here and then we're just going to install the plug onto that panel. So now I'm just putting the last finishing touch on. I'm putting the last... I don't know what to call them, but those little connectors that you like plug onto a, the back of things. Gotta be a crimp something. Crimp something. I'm sure someone will tell us in the comments, but these little connections. There we go. And then some shrink tube, which I'll shrink nice. down. And then it all connects here, and then it'll be the moment of truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready for the moment of truth? This is the fuse which should complete the circuit. Once I put this in and I turn the switch on, then this plug should be live. So let's see if I did everything correctly. Now I plug in my computer charger. And the light goes on! Yay. It's working! Wow. I have a plug now. I'm so glad because it means that I no longer have to create like this giant tripping hazard across the cabin every time I want to use my computer. Aladino never liked it, of course, because it was very inconvenient to anyone walking around the cabin. Yes, because so. I mostly hurricane from one side to the other and up and down and I forgot something, oh, wrong thing, and what was I looking for? And then so. you trip over the cord and then I yell at you for tripping over the cord and exactly. then... So, look, all of our problems have now been fixed. That's honestly how I feel right now. We also had a few fun little missions. For example, Aladino installed his Christmas present on the bulkhead. 
and we tested out a magic carpet original invention. Okay, so this is our saline magic carpet blender. We don't have any AC power, like any um, normal household power. We've just got the 12 volt plugs, and I really wanted a smoothie blender. So Aladino made me one. Okay, now we've tried this once and it didn't work so well, but I'm gonna try it a second time. Basically, he just took like a Nutribullet and stuck a, an attachment for the drill. And so now I can make my smoothie in the morning with a drill, but we'll see if it works better this time. Last time the lid kind of came off, smoothie went everywhere and it was really lumpy. Well, try to hold it because uh, the drill has to go in reverse for the blades to cut and that's also the direction that the lid would open. Ready? Yeah. I think that got it though. Look, it looks really smooth. Yeah, it still has chunks. I I'll mean, it has it chunks, but it's okay. I added more water this time too. I think that helped. Last time there wasn't enough water. I'm so stoked because that's something I missed so much on the boat last season was being able to make some smoothies in the morning. But now we've got a solution. <laughs> Not quite as smooth as a Vitamix, but you know, it'll do the trick. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amore. It's pretty smooth this time. I don't think you can blend anything hard though. I mean, there's only a banana and water in there. Aladino also did some repairs and preventative maintenance to the cabin top. What are you working on, my love? Closing a few holes. There was a hole here, so I first filled it with epoxy and wood. The wood was just to make the color. Like uh, sawdust, you mean? Yeah, okay. because uh, it's visible from the inside, so I added sawdust to uh, make it uh, disappear a bit more. And then our roof is uh, fiberglassed over, over the wood from, well, basically all wood is painted white. So I thought uh, I recreate this again and I just added a little patch of fiberglass here. Yeah. Nice. And then this is ready to be painted white. This is ready to be painted white. Well, basically here, oh, it's just a little hole, but this will be sanded and painted. As the day drew to a close, we put the tools down and I got out my violin to play you all a tune. So I thought I'd play a little tune for you tonight. The sun is coming down and our work is ending. I think we'll make some dinner pretty soon. Um, I'm going to play you a tune by Hanukkah Castle. She's a really incredible fiddler. So if you like fiddle music and you like this tune, I recommend going to check out her other music on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever. So here's a tune. It's called Dot the Dragon's Eyes by Hanukkah Castle. Delicious. Wow. You're amazing. There we go.